Good Thursday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversations Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, we made it over the hump, and we're in the home stretch toward the weekend. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Thursday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Saganovich. And in today's entertainment spotlight, you're being part of my conversation with best-selling author Vanessa Riley about her new book, Island Queen. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Thursday headlines. In national news, search of collapsed condo building switches from rescue to recovery. Emergency workers who have spent 14 days pulling apart the rubble of a collapsed condo building near Miami said on Wednesday they're switching from rescue to recovery mode, signaling the effort to find survivors was all but over. The news followed increasingly somber reports from emergency officials who indicated they had been preparing families for the worst outcome. Miami-Dade Assistant Fire Chief told families at a private briefing Wednesday afternoon that the emergency crews would remove the rescue dogs and sound devices, but otherwise will continue to search through the rubble for the bodies of their relatives. Our sole responsibility at this point is to bring closure, he said, as relatives sobbed in the background. For about two weeks after Champlain Tower South collapse, officials stressed their focus on finding survivors, a hope that was rekindled after workers demolished the remainder of the building, allowing rescuers access to new areas of debris. The hope was that they might find voids or open pockets in the rubble where someone could have survived. Some of those voids did exist, mostly in the basement and the parking garage, but no survivors were found. Instead, they recovered more than a dozen additional victims. Because the building fell in the early hours of June 24th, many were found dead in their beds. The death toll as of Wednesday was 46, with 94 people unaccounted for. No one has been pulled out alive since the first hours after the 12-story building fell. Twice during the search operation, rescuers had to suspend the mission because of the instability of the remaining part of the condominium building and the preparation for demolition. After initially hoping for miraculous rescues, families have slowly begun bracing themselves for the news that their relatives did not survive. In more national news, the Associated Press says body cam prompts new look at what killed black motorists. The FBI is taking the unusual step of ordering a new look at the autopsy of a black motorist, Ronald Green, to consider evidence not provided after his 2019 death, including a graphic body camera video of Louisiana State Troopers stunning, punching, and dragging him after a high-speed chase. The re-examined autopsy is part of a federal civil rights investigation that has taken on new urgency in the nearly two months since the Associated Press obtained and published the video of Green's arrest. Federal prosecutors also met with his family last month and made clear they plan to present the case to a grand jury by the summer's end. They wanted to emphasize to the family that they're serious this time, said the family's attorney, Lee Merritt. Their new enthusiasm is based on the public pressure that comes from the release of the videos. The autopsy could be crucial in determining if anyone is charged in the case. The initial examination of Green's body two years ago failed to determine whether his most severe injuries were caused by the trooper's violent use of force or a minor crash that followed the police chase. Several people familiar with the case told the Associated Press the FBI recently asked Dr. Frank Peretti, who conducted the initial autopsy, to take another look that takes into account a raft of evidence Louisiana State Police refused to provide the first time, including the trooper's body camera footage and even the most basic police reports. In more national news, the Associated Press asked, Is Thursday the new Monday? Flexible working is in flux. Last year, companies around the U.S. scrambled to figure out how to shut down their offices and set up their employees for remote work as the COVID-19 virus suddenly bore down on the world. Now, in a mirror image, they are scrambling to figure out how to bring many of those employees back. Most companies are proceeding cautiously, trying to navigate declining COVID-19 infections against a potential backlash by workers who are not ready to return. Tensions have spilled into the public at a few companies where some staff have organized petitions or even walkouts to protest being recalled to the office. Many workers in high-demand fields, such as tech or customer service, have options amid a rise in job postings promises, remote work, and alluring prospect for people who moved during the pandemic to be closer to family or in search of more affordable cities. And finally, in entertainment news, 
Countercultural filmmaker Robert Downey Sr. dies at 85. Robert Downey Sr., the accomplished countercultural filmmaker, actor, and father, has died. Downey Jr. wrote on Instagram that his father died late Tuesday in his sleep at home in New York. He had Parkinson's disease for more than five years. He was a true maverick filmmaker and remained remarkably optimistic throughout, Downey wrote in his statement. According to my stepmom's calculations, they were happily married for just under 2,000 years. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Tagamich. Mary Ellen, it's all yours. This is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Understand how your past has influenced your life. In order to discover fresh insights about who you are, delve deeply into the very core of your soul. Look at, examine, explore, and learn how your past has influenced your life. Does your past still have something to teach you? Is it still influencing your present moment choices? When you discover information from your past, you still need to learn. You empower yourself to become successful in the present moment. You rid yourself of excess baggage that is keeping you stuck. As you grow ever more thoughtful, the answers that present themselves to you will be both eye-opening and meaningful. Today, reflect on where you have been to understand where you're going. As you go about to enjoy the day. Best-selling author Vanessa Riley is joining me today in today's Entertainment Spotlight right here on Conversations Daily News. For Conversations Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Best-selling author Vanessa Riley rejoined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about her literary success and her new book, Island Queen. Here's a bit of our conversation. Having watched your success... It's interesting now that you give us Island Queen where you're able to look at somebody else's success. I want to ask you about that. What was it like for you as you were writing this book and thinking about Doll to also consider your own rise? Um, This story resonates in so many different ways, Cyrus. Um, Just the the freedom to be able to tell Doll's story. Uh, When I originally picked this Island Queen. I'd been, I, it was six years of research, of tracking and finding this woman, and I had this wonderful story, but I didn't think traditional publishing was ready for this story, as told by, through her voice. Um, okay. So I, I was at the pitching table uh, in front of uh, uh, my editor, Rachel, uh, at William Morrow, and I pitched this story three ways. I pitched it as, well, we could tell um, the king's mistress. So we could follow Prince William Henry, and that's the way we get to Dorothy's story. She's like, no, I've heard enough of those stories. I said, okay, we could talk about the two Dorothys. So you've got Dorothea Bland, who was uh, one of uh, Prince William Henry's minstresses. Uh, and Prince William Henry, once again, becomes William, King William IV of England. And then you have Dorothy Kerwin Thomas. She's like, no, um, tell, me, tell me about Dorothy. And when I go through and I tell her Dorothy's story, she bought on the table right there because this woman she's like the world needs to hear about this woman and she needs to be the spotlight she the light needs to be shined on her we don't need another narrative where she's diluted she's a background player or the best friend kind of scenario uh she's a complicated complex woman and the world should never have erased her cyrus webb conversations daily news we thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We'll be having you guys on tomorrow to wrap up this week. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.